Hello, in this video we're going to show that a group of order 77 is cyclic. And the way we're going to do this is by applying Selo's theorem. So proof, let G be a group with the order of G equal to 77, which written in its prime factorization is just 7 times 11. Now, by Selo's theorem, we can learn a little bit about the structure of our group. So Selo's theorem tells us that there are Selo P subgroups for each prime dividing the order of G. So there are Selo 7 subgroups and there are Selo 11 subgroups. Um, and Selo's theorem tells us the possible numbers of those Selo P subgroups. It tells us that the number of Selo 7 subgroups must divide 11 and the number of Selo 7 subgroups must be congruent to 1 mod 7 and similarly the number of Celo 11 subgroups must divide 7 and the number of Celo 11 subgroups is congruent to 1 mod the prime 11. So from these two bits of information we can learn even more. The only divisors of 11 are 1 and 11 because 11 is prime and the only one of those that fits this criterion which is n sub 7 congruent to 1 mod 7 would be n sub 7 equals 1. And similarly, if we look at n sub 11, the only candidates there on the divisibility condition would be 1 and 7. And then looking at the congruence condition, uh, we're just looking at n sub 11 equals 1. So what this means is that our CELO 7 subgroup is characteristically normal in G. And similarly, our CELO 11 subgroup in G is characteristically normal in G. And again, that all follows from CELO's theorem. Now, what else can we learn here? Well, we have some other information. For example, uh, by proposition 13 in section 3.2 of Dummett and Foote's abstract algebra textbook. We know that if we look at the CELO 7 subgroup in G, CELO 11 subgroup in G, so we're looking at the uh, internal direct product here, that the order of that is just the order of the CELO 7 subgroup in G times the order of the CELO 11 subgroup in G, all divided by the intersection of those two groups. Now, CELO 7 subgroups have order 7 and CELO 11 subgroups have order 11 and by Lagrange's theorem the intersection uh, being a subgroup would have to the order of that would have to divide 7 and 11 and the only uh, possibility that divides both 7 and 11 would be 1 hence the intersection is trivial it's just 1 um, and this tells us that this internal direct product the number of elements in there is 77. So that's uh, pretty interesting information. In fact, we could even look at kind of the, the lattice of subgroups here. I'm just going to rename our groups P7 and P11 for notational reasons, um, just to make our lattice a little bit cleaner. But I still mean the CELO 7 subgroups. Um, but here's our lattice that we're thinking about. We know that these two have a trivial intersection. Um, and we know that there's nothing sitting above this group because that group has 77 elements and that's the number of elements that our group G has. Now furthermore um, we can take a look at uh, G mod the centralizer in G of say our P11 group, our CELO11 uh, subgroup and we know that that is isomorphic to H which is some subgroup of the automorphism group of P11.
Well, we know what the automorphism group of P11, we know how many elements are in there. This has 10 elements. And so by Lagrange's theorem, if H is a subgroup of a group with 10 elements, uh, the order of H must divide 10. And here's a quotient group that's isomorphic, hence has the same number of elements as H. Um, this means that this quotient group must divide 10. Well, G has 77 elements. Um, and just looking at sort of the divisibility relations we have here, we can conclude that the number of elements that the centralizer in G of P11 has must be equal to the order of G. In other words, this quotient group better be 1. Um, so what does that mean? That means that everybody in G commutes with all the elements in P11. It means that uh, P11 is actually uh, in the center of G. And by a similar computation, shows that uh, P7 our CELO 7 subgroup is in the center. So the conclusion here is that uh, any elements of X in, in our CELO 7 subgroup and Y in our CELO uh, 11 subgroup, X and Y generators there of those groups, non-trivial elements, in other words, um, those two elements commute and hence the order of such an element X, Y would be 77. And from that, we can conclude that G is actually isomorphic to the cyclic group of order 77.